Come on, it's not necessary for you to stand during the whole hour. Please, sit down. <laughs> oh, what a great audience. Terrific. You're in a good mood, yeah. Got a good show for you tonight. Uh, before we start, I just uh, saw an announcement. This is in the sports desk. The Philadelphia Phillies just named yeah. George Burns as designated hitter. <laughs> Pretty good game last night, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, good game. One one now. Some of the Philadelphia players are a little, little long in the tooth, aren't they? Well, some of the guys are so old they've forgotten where to scratch. <laughs> you see that? Hey, I lived in New York 17 years, and I cannot get used to baseball in Los Angeles, even though the Dodgers are out here. Remember, you'd go to. Yankee yeah. Stadium, you yeah. go to Ebbets Field. Yeah. New York fans. No, we have great baseball fans, but New York fans are crazed. Yeah. You know, it's too late back out here. Back in New York, they yell, George! Yeah. Out here, you say, hey, go with your feelings. <laughs> there was a scandal in last night's ball game. Pete Rose's hit was taken away when they found 18 inches of. Grecian formula in his hair. <laughs> anyway, it's all tied up. I guess the next game is tomorrow. In Philadelphia, the city of city of brotherly love. The game is listed in TV Guide in Philadelphia as the old and the restless. That's what they did in Philadelphia. Another late report in the newsroom. John Hausman was just caught eating at Burger King wearing a Groucho Marx nose and mustache. <laughs> I keep driving by McDonald's looking for John Houseman. Well, have you seen those commercials? In his three-piece suit walking through the golden arches? I eat here. <laughs> sure. Last night, I, I mentioned something that was in the paper yesterday. There's a town in uh, Northern California, Chico, California. And I mentioned, you know about Chico? How big a town is Chico? I don't know. Five thousand. About 5,000? Okay. Anyway, they passed along the town of Chico. If you set off a nuclear bomb, <laughs> this is true, in town, you get six months in jail and a $500 fine. <laughs> People thought I was making that up, but it's absolutely true. Now, if you set one off in Burbank, you get a reward. <laughs> Well, I have some exciting political news. John Anderson will announce his candidacy in a few weeks. <laughs> he's, uh, he's already being called the spoiler for Harold Stassen. <laughs> George McGovern heard about Anderson's running for president. He says, that guy's living in a dream world. <laughs> You know, we live in a great country where any man can run for president. And they are. <laughs> James Watt has created more controversy. A lot of Republicans in Congress are calling for the resignation of James Watt. Uh, they say he's a liability. Watt says he's not going to resign. Matter of fact, he's on vacation now at his ranch in California. You can spot uh, Watt's ranch if you drive by. Uh, <laughs> Do you have a joke I don't know about? No, there's a sign at the furthest end of his parking lot that says, Crippled Parking Here. <laughs> well, I agree with you. <laughs> you shouldn't have a sign like that. Now, I never thought I would see the day that Walt Disney Productions would be doing something that apparently they are doing, according to the paper. They're having financial problems, and to kind of recoup some of their losses, you know what they're doing? They're making their first film with nudity. Mm. I cannot believe that. Is that. It was in the paper. Is that true? Yes, it's true. Oh, Walt Disney must be spinning like a lathe in his grave. I can't. <laughs> Not only that, but they have a cartoon out next week called Mickey and Goofy Decorate a Loft in San Francisco. <laughs> Actually, if you think about it, Disney paved the way for screen nudity. Donald Duck's gone bottomless since 1933. <laughs> Those of you who live in Los Angeles and have a home, 
have a great chance, apparently, to rent it out during next summer during the Olympics. Have you heard about what people are getting for their homes? Something like ten or $20,000 a week. Yeah, you can rent your home out to somebody from another country, but apparently they've had some problems here. And there's a meeting at Mayor Bradley's office next week because people have sent in deposits and they have been lost or something. And they say there are certain questions you should ask yourself and ask the prospective people who are going to rent your home. For example, never rent, rent, never rent? <laughs> never rent to anyone who asks if your trash compactor will take camel dung. <laughs> These are just a few. Never rent to a spot. <laughs> Never rent to anyone who calls your backyard ground zero. That's bad. <laughs> and never rent to anyone who picks up, makes a long-distance phone call and says, ask for Muammar baby. <laughs> Maybe three of those were too many. <laughs> now, I hate to finish the monologue on a sad note, but it is, it is kind of sad. I'm going to tell you. Earl, Earl S. Tupper, the father of Tupperware. Yes, died today. He was 76 years old, lived in Costa Rica. I didn't know that that's where the name came from, Earl Tupper. And he, he succumbed yesterday. And he was, uh, he was, he was laid to rest last night in a, in a six foot plastic container with a snap lid on it. No, I, I don't mean to make light of it. It's, it's kind of sad that he passed away because Earl was working on his latest invention, Tupper underwear. <laughs> which are plastic briefs to keep your buns warm. <laughs> anyway, we have an exciting show tonight, and along with a, one of the... I'm a great fan, have been of Bob Newhart's for many, many years. Bob is with us tonight. <laughs> A really fine young actor who was one of the stars of a show that, unfortunately, the networks saw fit not to keep on the air. The show was called Paper Chase. His name is James Stevens. He is here. And, gentlemen, and we have the chief of police of a small town in Oklahoma. Uh, his name is Ronnie Porter. And Mr. Porter is here because he's been in the news lately because the town does not have a police car. And they're having trouble apprehending people. They have one, but apparently it doesn't <laughs> It's not working too well, and it's, it's been in the national news, so we invited Chief Porter here to explain his plight to us. And later on, as a special surprise, all the candidates, Democratic candidates running for president, will be out here and do a conehead sketch. <laughs> so, sounds like a great show, so stay with us. And we'll... serving drinks outside or something? No. I think they're so happy that we've started our 22nd year. They're very happy. When did we start year. that? Two nights ago. We did. <laughs> this is the third night of our 22nd year. That's right. Monday we had our anniversary show, and we showed a lot of highlights and tapes and things we've done the past year. We didn't show everything in that program. Well, you couldn't in a two-hour show. <laughs> I'm just trying to help you set it up, that's all. Did I take a pause no, there? no. <laughs> All I said was we didn't show everything, and before I could take a breath, you said, well, we couldn't in two hours. Well, could we? No, we really had to eliminate a lot of things that people wanted to see, and, and maybe maybe next year, no. if we show up next year, uh, we'll have some of those things. Okay. Anyway, some of the things we didn't show you, there were other highlights, uh, which I have been keeping in the Tonight Show scrapbook, as I call it. <laughs> well, what would I call That's it? That's a good name for it. What else would I call it? Johnny's Book. What? 
Johnny's book. That's no, no, it's the Tonight Show scrapbook. And if you watch the monitor, I will show you some of the things, uh, highlights that we didn't show you Monday night. Set it up, then do it. <laughs> One of my personal highlights was the night the late George Jessel came on and showed where Al Jolson bit him after he insulted Al's mammy. <laughs> That wasn't one of the big highlights. <laughs> Did you watch the monitor on that? <laughs> that helps. Might have been looking here, you see, therefore they didn't see the picture. That's probably what it was. Now, you may have caught, we didn't play it this year, The Wedding of Tiny Tim on our show. It was back in 1969. But what you didn't see after the program was when our producer, Fred de Cordova, took advantage of the minister being here and fulfilled a lifelong fantasy. He took as his bride the late Andy Devine. <laughs> Fred de Cordova, right there. <laughs> this is one of the worst magic acts we ever booked on the show. Baby Huey Deeney. <laughs> See here, making his female assistant's Timex disappear in his neck fat. <laughs> one of the worst acts ever. <laughs> you know, through the, through the years, people on our show have won a lot of different awards, but I think the most memorable moment may have been last year when Doc was presented with this award, the Gay Emmy. <laughs> no, 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 come on. I mean, anything by that is silliness. <laughs> I don't like that one. <laughs> you had this scrapbook and you don't like it. <laughs> Maybe another one he doesn't like. <laughs> this is one of our talent coordinators. Her name is Cheryl Thing. And this was taken the morning after she discovered Mr. T. Here Cheryl is describing to me why she wants him to be on the show. Because <laughs> he's got this big hair <laughs> She loves that big mohawk hairdo. <laughs> Here you see the NBC security guards escorting a man off the premises as they have every night for the last 21 years. This man has been pouring a half ton of kitty litter in my parking space and making obscene sand sculptures. <laughs> Let me just take a look at these. I'm going to save your time, you know. We're going to be finished early. Well, okay. All right. Now, every night, most people don't know this, I make, I make a little extra money after the show by having my two ex-neighbors from Nebraska let their pigs loose in the audience to root for change that people in the audience have dropped in their seats. No, it's, you're not sure on that one. Ah, you'll remember this. One of the most unusual acts we featured her on the show in 1964. This matronly lady came on and went through the change of life while the band played the theme from Bonanza. <laughs> now, you always hear people when they have a television show talk about the people behind the scenes that you don't see on camera. You've heard of that, right? Well... This man is not behind. This man is under the scenes. For 20, for 21 years, he has lived under my desk. to be because he, he didn't have a place to live. I didn't know. That's, that is terrible. I've got to study these longer. Okay, this man has been sitting in a camp chair in the parking lot after every show for 21 years and annoying female members of our audience by asking them to guess what he's hiding under his Zorro hat. we got to get rid of him. I remember one night Ed snuck backstage 
during a dog act and tried to make a deal with a St. Bernard. Ed said if the dog would let him chug his barrel, Ed would let the dog suck the apple stains off his tie. Now, every night during their dinner break, little old fact, the band calls up a weird restaurant in West Hollywood and orders mannequin parts to go. <laughs> Here you see the restaurant delivering their order one night last week, a bucket of boobs. Now, that's the weird, that is the most ridiculous joke we've ever done. Ever done. Okay, Louie? Okay. <laughs> Weird joke. We have with us tonight Bob Newhart will be out, James Stevens from the Paper Chase, and Ronnie Porter, who is the chief of police of a town called, uh, I think it's Walitka. 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 Walitka, Oklahoma. Okay, stay where you are. We'll be right back. <laughs> Thank you, Doc. We're back. Bob Newhart will be out in a while. James Stevens. We, uh, the reason we have this next gentleman on is because he's been getting uh, quite a bit of space uh, around the country in newspapers because he's a chief of police of a small town in Oklahoma called Willetka, and he's been having problems with his uh, police car. We thought he might make an interesting guest, so we invited him to come here and uh, explain what's going on down there. Would you welcome chief of police, Ronnie Porter. Ronnie? <laughs> Chief, it's good to meet you. Glad to be here. We met backstage, and you were just coming through, and you looked a little chagrined because somebody said you were going to go into the makeup room. <laughs> <laughs> and you didn't know whether you wanted to be made up or not. Oh, yeah, I have we, to be. <laughs> yeah, we have to do that for television. It's, it's nice to meet you. Glad to be here. Everybody want to tell us Johnny High. Yeah? So I just had them write a name on there, and I got about 22 foot of tapes that say, Hi, Johnny. Is that right? <laughs> Are you putting me on? Can I take a look? Yes. We won't read them all, of course, but... All from Walitka? Walika. Walika, I'm sorry. <laughs> you were right. I was right the first time. I said Walika, and you corrected me. At the, <laughs> whereabouts, whereabouts is uh, Walika? Walika is 89 miles east of uh, Tulsa, uh, Oklahoma City. Right. And about 60 miles south and west of Tulsa. Right. How long have you been chief of police there? I've been there about six months. About six months. Now, I understand that you have a small police force. Right. How many officers uh, total? We have... Uh, Four men, and we did have one part time. We had to cut back because the budget, so we just have four men. Well, that's a small police force. I wanted to make you an honorary policeman uh, on one condition. Yeah? You use your own car because we don't have one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, okay, well, I'm, I'm honored. Thank you, Chief. Police of Willica. Okay, now tell me what the problem is. When, when did you first notice you had problems with the, with the police car? Well, when I took over, we uh, had a 75 and a 76 Plymouth. Uh -huh. Both of them were the ex-Highway Patrol cars. Mm -hmm. The 75 was a uh, backup unit, right. and it was uh, supposed to be in worse shape than our 76. Yeah. So the 76 was using about three quarts of oil a day, and you go over 35 miles an hour, it's shaming. Mm -hmm. so, uh, three quarts of oil a day? <laughs> then what would happen when you go 35? Uh, when to... you go 35 miles an hour or more, you're putting people's lives in danger because uh, it's shimmy. It's, shimmy. Uh, <laughs> And uh, there's no industry there, so our budget is down to zero. Right. And uh, it's just like in anything, you got to have money to keep anything going. Yeah. You build a home, you run out of money, you're going to have to stop building that home. So. Yeah, and it's pretty hard when it, it's, it's a small city, isn't it? Yes, it's 1,200 people. 1,200 people. And I suppose to raise money to get a new police car is just it's not in the budget this year. I guess. That's right. A lot of towns, well, have you had problems now when you have to try to, uh, occasionally I suppose you have to chase somebody or apprehend somebody? Well, uh... You do have a few try to outrun you. Mostly whenever they know you ain't got no wheels, they're going to try to outrun you. <laughs> and I guess what we're doing is telling the whole nation here that you got no wheels down there. Uh, you know, we, do, we do have a, a car now. Uh -huh. uh, really, uh, I had a gospel stand to raise money for the police department. Held a benefit, right? Uh, I had it nationwide, uh, or statewide rather, throughout many papers and radio that we're going to have a gospel stand for fundraising, try to raise money. Good idea. I had uh, several newspapers, uh, state newspapers, local newspapers, to uh, put it in there as a news item where I could get a uh, lot of people down. Right. I had about eight or ten gospel stingers donate their talent That's to good. help raise money. And the night of the gospel stand, which was August the 20th, right. I uh, 
head the gospel thing, and we had about 150 people come out to it. And uh, I got about $150 to $250 in donations to the police department. But I had a news reporter, Tom Carter, from the Tulsa World come down mm -hmm. to uh, cover the uh, story. And uh, it wasn't too good of a success, so he took pictures of my wore out police card and put it on the front page of the Tulsa World with the newspaper statewide in Oklahoma. Yeah. I uh, had it covered uh, from there, and it had the Associated Press. And then Paul Harvey called me, and it, uh, yeah. he talked about it. And I had a radio station in Kansas City. Well, you're getting a lot of press on this, then. Right. Have you got a new car yet? Why? Well, that's what I'm trying to say. Oh. Uh, radio... Excuse me, Chief. <laughs> radio... I hate to be interrogated by you, Chief. <laughs> a, radio station, a radio station in Kansas City picked it up on the wire. Yeah. And they had a little fun out of it. They thought it was funny. And then uh, Johnny Dolan, who is a disc jockey, he, I understand he's no longer working with them. He, uh... <laughs> What happened to Johnny? Well, uh, Johnny, he t uh, got home the other day, and I believe he got fired. Uh, oh. Now, yeah, uh, it's just one of them things. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, anyhow, he got a hold of it. He told me it was funny. And after he got through laughing about it, he wanted to know the serious problem. Yeah. And he helped me, and he got a hold of the Blue Ridge Mods Company in uh, Kansas City. Huh? They uh, donated a 73 Catalina Pontiac with 65,000 miles on it. That's not so bad. Uh, it's, uh, it's really a good car, but at 10 years old... 10 years old. Uh, it's lucky to be running three hours, much less 24 hours a day. Yeah, so you're really not up to where you want to be no, yet. No, sir, no, I'm not. Tell you what, we're going to take a break, and we'll come back and talk about this some more, right? All right. All right. Okay, we'll be right back. The Chief Order, so here you are. This is the city, Waleka, Oklahoma. I work here. I'm a cop. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> We're talking with Chief of Police of Waleka, Oklahoma, Ronnie Porter. Uh, so you got a 63... 63 now. Uh, Se 73. 73, 73. With the old car, did you ever have succeed in pulling anybody over at all? Oh, uh, yes, we could stop them. Uh, the only thing, when you got too fast like that, you put everybody's life in danger because they yeah. were... You know, bad cars. Somebody told me once you stopped one of the local citizens, but while you were talking to her, you, your car started to smoke or something? Yes, sir. Uh, the wire shorted out. And uh, <laughs> up, up on making contact with her, uh, looked back and with the red light going, it shorted out and it was smoking. So I told her, slow it down, got back and yeah. took care of my fire. <laughs> <laughs> So you got you got a real problem there, haven't you? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, you should have a, have a good police car. Uh, is there is there much crime in, in Wilika at all? Of any? Well, it's not a whole lot of crime, but Johnny is just like any other small town. You know, you have to cope with anything that happens, and we have the same crime you have out here. We just don't have it at often. Yeah, well, that's probably true. You have a large jail, or? Well, it's not a large. It's a very small jail. Yeah. Uh, we. Uh, have to take them to the county a lot of times and put them in the county jail. Right. What's the most unusual case uh, since you've been at Malika that's, that's happened? Most exciting case? Oh. Outside of the lady you stopped uh, in the car. <laughs> and your car caught on fire. I mean, that's... Uh... Well, I was... Uh, I've been a chief for about a week. Whenever our police car was vandalized, we had... Uh, two on local... top of that, they vandalized the car? <laughs> We, you have enough trouble. You mean they pick on the car, too? Well, you're not, you're not the most liked person, you know? Yeah, of course. Uh, we, uh, I've been a chief about a week. Our police car was vandalized, bust the windshield out of it, uh -huh. cut all four tires, which was uh, fairly new tires. Uh, it, I uh, had them apprehended. I was home in bed at about midnight. My patrolman called me. I went out, and I had them apprehended within about three hours. Uh, yeah. Course they slashed your tires and broke the windshield. Yes. Sir. Now, what kind of a punishment uh, would you mete out for something like that? Well, this this misdemeanor. Also, they uh, they uh, are paying back for the car. Well, they should. They should pay back for the car. Um, <laughs> are you from Walika yourself? No, sir, I'm not. I've been there about a year. I'm from We Wolka, Oklahoma. Exactly. We Wolka. These are all Indian names, right? Yeah. These are all Indian names. Um, how far is that from Walika? It's 36 miles. Now, do you commute, or do you actually stay in Wilika? I live in Wilika. Yeah. I uh, have 
my family, my father, my sister, and brothers, they still live and we woke up. That's good. That's good. Right. Um, I, I have something I was going to ask. I forgot what it was. Do you have any? <laughs> do you have any vice problems there, at all? I mean, oh. you know. <laughs> Well, I mean, any uh, vice problems, you know, like gambling or uh, uh, sexual oh. misbehavior or, uh, <laughs> you know, that, that's a big problem in big cities. And uh, I Well, just... I'm sure they probably are. For gambling, no. No gambling. Uh, you know, we like to say we do have drug problems and things yeah. like this. That's, uh, uh, there's a lot of problems we have that uh, I haven't encountered yet, and a lot of them that I'll probably be surprised when I do because yeah. it is a small town <laughs> but uh, being a small town like that we do have the same problem we just don't have just we had a bank robbery there about eight years ago uh, who would think it was a, small a bank town, robbery yes how long ago was that eight years ago <laughs> and uh, who would think a small town with 1200 would have a bank robbery but yeah. you know they it, cracked the bank of Walika did they the what was that the Walika bank or that the, uh, the state national bank of Walika yeah did you ever apprehend the uh... well I wasn't there but I'm Sure they did. Oh, I didn't mean it was your fault. I mean, <laughs> of course, without a car, it doesn't make much difference. Anyway. <laughs> well, Chief, it's nice, to, it's nice of you to come out here, and I really hope that the citizens down there and maybe your appearance on this show will help people to... Uh, we can't ask for donations on the air, but maybe if they feel, you know, that they want to help out, maybe they'll do that, okay? Well, I appreciate it, because we could use a better car, but I'm proud of the one we got, because we can move now. Yeah, you can get out of As long as you can move. Chief, thank you. Give our best to everybody. For. Right. He's a nice man. That was Ronnie yeah. Porter, and uh, you know, having come from small really town, help. having come from small yeah. towns, they have the same problems, you know, as everybody else. But you know, you can't get in your car and chase anybody. That's not much fun. <laughs> <laughs> you could put a red light on a cow, you know. Mm. <laughs> Doesn't it's not, not too intimidating though. Mm. Uh, Bob Newhart will be here in a moment, and James Stevens. Stay where you are. Is a good friend who's had much success in movies, television, radio, and nightclubs. His series, of course, is called Newhart. Will premiere on Monday, October 17th at 9:30. Would you welcome Bob Newhart? I enjoyed the interview with the chief. I nice man. A thought crossed my mind, it might be a nice gesture on your part to uh, donate your DeLorean to the... <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Well, yes, that would be kind of nice. A nice, sleek, modern. <laughs> Fully paid for. The gold doors might create problems. That's, That's right, especially if you have arrest somebody for drunkenness. Yeah. You get in there, the doors <laughs> <can't>. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just, he's it's, got a prop. Chief's got a problem, you know. He sure does. Yeah. Do you have an extra car at all that you? Want? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I've known you for what? Twenty years, something like that. At least twenty. At yeah. least twenty yeah. years. And you're just so successful, and you still dress. You started as an as an accountant. Yeah. And you still dress conservatively with a vest. You don't see people wearing vests much anymore. You wear them well. Well, thank you. Thank you. Some, but, uh, <laughs> some people can wear vests and other people can't. <laughs> found out a long time ago I could pull it off. and uh, I... It has a certain uh, panache to it, you know. Mm -hmm. It gives you an image. But don't you just like to break loose occasionally? And... Oh, I do. But at an important show like this, uh, I like to dress appropriately. I see. <laughs> In other words, you're can we get to my notes? They're much no, funnier. <laughs> No, I don't want to get. I don't want to get to those at all. He's doing that to me again. <laughs> well, I want to make you feel comfortable. I, I, of course, I feel comfortable. I didn't mean that I didn't like your clothes. No, I understand that. They're... Obviously expensive. Yeah. And uh, okay, moving along now. Okay. You you were in 2020 recently. Yes. And you made some statements. One of them was that there will always be comedians around, as long as. Other people, or people do stupid things. Is that That's close? right. That's comedians. We're very lucky. I mean, singers come and go, but as long as as people do stupid things and and we watch them, uh, then we will work. <laughs> because we do them. That's you know, right. And 
We can't wait on this I do, uh, For instance, I did a stupid thing this week. And <laughs> Tell us about it. <laughs> <laughs> and I, it was one of those situations where I was glad no one else was around, you know, where you do something stupid and you look and you say, thank God no one saw that, because... Uh, we changed banks, went to a different bank, and uh, as a precaution, I tore up uh, my checks from the old bank uh, because I was afraid, you know, somebody would find them and write a check. Sure. And then I tore up the deposit slips because uh, apparently I was afraid that someone would try to deposit money <laughs> in, in your name to my old account. Yeah. Sure. And uh, <laughs> pictured pictured getting a call, you know, uh, from the police saying, we've caught the guy who's been doing this. <laughs> and do you want to prosecute? And say, well, of course I want to prosecute. He could go out. If you let him off, he could be depositing money in other people. <laughs> How much has he got in there? Yeah. And then you felt foolish all of a sudden. You didn't yeah, want anybody I, to see I'm that. I'm glad nobody is, uh, was around, and here I am telling it. Yes. So you're right. Another thing, I went to a... We really don't read... Labels. I went to a vitamin store, and um, the, I get intimidated in most stores, hardware stores and vitamin stores, because I like to pretend I know, you know, but I, I don't really know. And uh, the woman's, I ordered something, and the woman said, would you like that natural or pre-digested? And I said, uh, pre-digested. And I took it, and I got in the car, and then I realized, I began to picture <laughs> how... <laughs> How do they get it back in the body? <laughs> I mean, I like a picture of the guy that pre-digested. <laughs> does, does this kind of work for a living? I, mean, I don't. I have no idea how they do that. I don't know exactly what that means either. Were these vitamins or something? Vitamins, yes. You take. Vitamins? I haven't been. I haven't taken. Uh, I didn't used to do that. I'm doing it now. There's a there's a whole thing about um, that life extension thing. You know that they claim with vitamins you can live to be 120, 130 years old. Yeah. You know. But would you want it? You know, I don't know. I really don't. don't that's, that's the question they haven't answered. That's right. What do you do those last, if you retire at 70, what do you do for 45 years, 50 years? Well, not only that, but, I mean, there are going to be a lot more people around, you know, and it's going to be pretty crowded, you know, and uh, yeah. not a lot of space, you know, and you're going to be, you know, standing around like... <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, here comes another one. Don't, don't put him on our row. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the problem. <laughs> 50 years of retirement, wasn't it? You also talk in that show about, and I don't know why comedians, we always get into this. We talk about things that have not worked. Yes. We find great humor in things that go, as they say, down the drain or flop. I've seen you at parties, and we talk about just deadly routines. And we get hysterical about yeah. it when you're yeah. talking about it. Why is that? Self-protection of some kind? Uh, yeah, I, I guess so. It's, it's, um, I did one, I did a routine. I've done a lot of routines that uh, I've done right not too many feet away. <laughs> just a short nothing. walk from here, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm the star spot there. <laughs> With all intention, you but think it's going to be dynamite. Wrong. You think in your head it's, it's, it's a well, good yeah, price. I think every one you do, you think it has a chance. I did one, um, uh, I did one on a, uh, a light, it's kind of a parody on lifeboats. You know, the, the movie Lifeboat, where they all wound up in a lifeboat. And uh, right. I did it with an English accent. I don't know if that had anything to do with it. But uh, uh, he, uh, he explained that their biggest, uh, their biggest fear, they didn't know if they would be picked up right away or it could be several days. So the, the biggest fear was uh, boredom. So they had to kind of amuse themselves in the, in the lifeboat. And uh, so he, the guy kind of got up a, an amateur hour in the lifeboat for so, uh, to take their minds off of uh, yeah. off of their plight. And um, now that sounds pretty amusing. I, yeah. Oh, uh, wait. <laughs> I, I know it's going to be tragic, but so, it sounds good. So one guy raised his hand and he said, "And and what what do you do, sir?" And he said, uh, "You're uh, you're able to take your eyeglasses off with your tongue." <laughs> I, I don't think that's quite... Then that, that was pretty much the... the uh, <laughs> no, I always thought that was funny. That, you, it ended with... Uh, it happened to be a flamenco team. It happened to be in the lifeboat. Right? Don't uh, tell me. And they danced and, and put a hole in the boat. The <laughs> I had to get out of it somehow. Didn't you do a routine once about Hungarian singer? I've done about three versions of, of a Hungarian singer on, a, on the Ted Mac Amateur Hour. Um, that's the premise. 
<laughs> yeah, I don't know why I'm fascinated by that, but it's a, it's a man who who uh, he gets on the the old Ted Mac amateur, and he says, uh, "I escaped uh, Hungary in nine, uh, 1956, and come to America, and I used to listen Voice America in Hungary, but it's dangerous in Hungary. You listen Voice America because they can put you in prison." And and throw the doors away. <laughs> keys, keys away, keys away. And but I listen in corner of attic. Listen, the Metropolitan Opera broadcast and learn to sing the song I'd like to do now, Vesti Lejuba, which I learned from listening voice voice American. All right, go, go right ahead. Good luck. <laughs> La Juve Well, but that's possible. That's I mean, that's funny. entirely See, possible. That's funny. Now, when you've tried that, has it... Yeah. That's, so, yeah. It's always worked, isn't it? Pretty much, yeah. 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 It's a funny premise. We'll, uh, we'll take a break. We'll be right back. Is that instructions, Fred, as I understand them? Yeah, I don't really understand them, but... I would like to bring this young man out because we got a little behind time, and you'll be back with us soon, won't you? Thank you, John. Thank he, you. He's a fine young actor. He was the co-star of the television series Paper Chase, which is now on cable TV starting again on October the 15th. Would you welcome James Stevens? met until just backstage and I, I expressed something to you that uh, I'd like to say uh, for everybody. I sometimes don't understand television. When you have a show that critically received all the acclaim that Paper Chase did with, with good writing, excellent performances, and really, and really said, tried to say something. And there were humor, hum, humorous things and, uh, and straight things, and you end up on cable TV. Do you ever sit back and say to yourself, how come? I do, I do, but I'm so delighted to be on something that, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I am disappointed that uh, CBS didn't decide to continue with the show, but uh, I'm delighted to be working, Yeah, you know, on paper, which is a great show to do. I'm glad it's coming back. You know, NBC hung in with the Street Blues in the first year, was not, was not highly acclaimed and didn't have the ratings, but they hung in there and gave it a chance for the audience to discover the show. And I, th I, th I think the same thing would have happened with Paper Chase if they would have just, say, hung in for another six or seven months. Yeah. Good show. Good show. Yeah. Was that your first uh, major... Yeah, that was my first big break, as they say. I'd been uh, hanging around uh, waiting for the phone to ring for a long time. Yeah. You're from where originally? Born in New York, uh, raised in Mexico City. Right. Yeah. Did, did a light just New go York out, or, or, is it, or is it going to rain? Did I see a light go out, or yes. is my tumor acting up again? <laughs> uh, something blink like that. Uh, all of the young actors on that show... Including your good, and of course, working you work with John Houseman all the time. Yeah, is he in, is intimidating in a way? The, the character he plays, of course, is very intimidating in the show. Very intimidating, and you know when he's not throwing hamburgers around the set. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's really great to he's great to work. Very shy man. Uh -huh. uh, been around a long time, done a lot of things. He's there for a couple of days during the week, and uh, um, he's a delight. Yeah. He's a very He's a wonderful guy. Yeah. Wonderful guy. No, nowhere near as intimidating as he comes out on yeah. the show. You play, Unless you're arguing with him, of course. Yeah. In which case, you find yourself in the Hart Kingsfield relationship. Always, always. Yeah. You play, of course, a bright, a bright law student there. Uh, were you a good student in, uh, no. in school? No, I wasn't. That's what good. somebody told me. You were not particularly... Yeah. No, uh, academics and I, uh, like oil and vinegar, I um, couldn't quite get interested as a kid. Yeah. And um, as a result, I mean, I was delighted, terrified to hear that uh, they wanted me to play a young law student. As I began to do the research, I realized, my God, this guy has to go through, um, you know, college and then pass an incredible examination. Right. In order to get into law school, you have to be very bright. And I, I always found that amusing because I did so badly in school. I, I seemed to do everything but... Um, pay attention to uh yeah did that start early in school or just yeah, school? very very early as a matter of fact um i flunked kindergarten it's <laughs> very well, it used to be an old joke how could you flunk sand pile and blocks or something like <laughs> exactly, that I mean. that's right well I'll tell you i was in mexico and um 
uh, the reason I flunked kindergarten was that I had polio. For at the age of, yes, I had polio at the age of four, and uh, result, my motor skills weren't really developed enough to uh, handle the crayons. You know, I couldn't quite write my name in a way that anyone could understand, and so as a result, I had to uh, repeat kindergarten. I had to, you know, figure out how to mix uh, those colors to get some other color. You know, children at that age can be rather cruel when they see somebody else have a, having a handicap or something. Did that, did that stay in your mind at all? Yeah, that stayed in my mind, stayed in my mind for quite a long time. As a matter of fact, I, uh, I um, always felt a little bit uh, intimidated by the world. I, I always felt that people were looking at me either in a very derogatory manner, you know, the cripple with braces up to his waist, uh, or um, in a very patronizing fashion. You know, oh, you poor guy, well, you must be demented yeah. if you have, you know, braces on your legs. You must not function properly in any respect. And that was always difficult, made me uh, a little uncomfortable. I used to fight a lot, you know, as a kid. And um, it, was, it was rough. Where did you 